We're going to turn to 2 Samuel 15, and it says this. It says, after this, Absalom got himself a chariot and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom used to rise early and to stand beside the way of the gate. And when any man had a dispute to come before the king for judgment, Absalom would call to him and say, from what city are you? And when he said, your servant is from such and such a tribe in Israel, Absalom would say to him, see, your claims are good and right, but there is no man designated by the king to hear you. Then Absalom would say, oh, that I were judge in the land. Then every man with a dispute or cause might come to me, and it would give him justice. And whenever a man came near to pay homage to him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Then Absalom did to all of Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. So King David, in his mercy, does not pursue Absalom either. But Absalom eventually comes out of hiding and he shows up with a chariot and horses and, a, and an army of men to stand at the gates of, of Jerusalem. He won't go into the city. He stays outside the city and David can watch him from the palace as he greets people who have grievances and instead of going before the king to judge them, he says, let me judge you. Now Absalom is a, is a good-looking, charismatic, strong leader. Right? Matter of fact, Absalom is a, is a well-respected and well-liked person. Some people say he looked the most like David. Like if they were to choose a king, then he looked just like David. He was the spitting image and the spitting character in the eyes of Israel as David. And so when he stood out there and said, let me help you from my father, they took him and they did this. Now he's doing this to get attention from his father. Right? He wants to upset his father because a father's love that's angry is better than no f love from a father, right? Some of us would rather God be an angry God than we would be God not speak to us or be distant from us at all, right? We would rather have that force in our life than have, than have an absence. And Absalom is living in this void because he has not made a step toward, and David is just watching in his mercy and his grace, and he's kind of got this thing going. Now, Absalom really wants a relationship with his father. And, and the funny thing is, is David really wants a relationship with Absalom. But they're at this impasse because of things that have happened and because of perceived things of the, of the nation and, and the people around him. He's gathered an army of people who tell him, oh, your, dad, your dad's never going to see you, right? He's gathered, he's, he's put himself at just outside the borders of his dad's of his dad's area so that he can just stay just close enough but still be in his legal right to feel violated and, and abandoned, right? And, he, and he's puts himself in, in this area where, where they both desire this relationship, but, but David allows these things to continue to build. They allow, he allows Absalom to build up his own kingdom. Now, why would David allow another person to build up a kingdom in his, in his life? Well, then I have to ask you, why does God observe us and allow us to build up our own kingdoms in this world? Right? Why, is, why does God in his love and mercy allow us to build our own little kingdom outside of his kingdom? Because we feel like we've done so much we can't go back to the Father. So instead we take our surroundings and we build ourselves a place, a fortification of our own peace and our own joy and our own ability to control what there is. God allows it because he knows, he, he, he knows, he loves him so much. God loves you so much. David loves Absalom so much that he is willing to watch him fail or to, or to grow or to be in that situation. He secretly wants, us, wants success in spades for his children. He wants you to have so much success that he's allowing you to work through your process and your ways to get back to him. Because he knows the end of it. He knows this world is hard. And that no matter what kingdom you build or no what thing you do, it's going to come to an end because it is, it is in contrary to God's will for your life. And so he knows that as much as you build it, as, as big as you fortify it, eventually it will fall. And there will be your loving father waiting for you. So that's David's hope because he has a heart like God. That's David's hope.